Greetings, greetings, greetings. I um, taught a message on Sunday titled, What is Prayer? And that was, I think, one of the most powerful messages that God has, has ever given me to teach. All of the messages he gives me to teach are powerful, but, but since I've taught that message, it has been on my heart still. It has still been ministering to me day and night. Um, I've been waking up thinking about the word that God gave me to teach on Sunday, all the, um, the, the, the um, nuggets, what I call them, that he gave me to share with you guys. And, and this word also ministered to me. And I've been waking up every morning being very intentional about, you know, going before the Lord in prayer. Um, one of the things that stand out the most um, in the message that I taught on Sunday is when I said that prayer is relationship. Prayer is fellowship and prayer is worship. That I just keep hearing that, that statement of truth in my head and my heart ever since, ever since I, I taught that message. And it's been really, really ringing truth to me and revealing to me more and more the necessity um, of prayer. Prayer is a vital necessity. It's like the air that we breathe. And I'm learning each and every day through, through life, and through challenges and trials and tribulation, um, the the value, the um, necessity, the power of prayer, and having God to reveal to me, and even reiterate to me, even today and in, in, in this hour, that prayer is relationship, prayer is fellowship, prayer is worship, and so just like any normal relationship that we have with our spouses, with our children, our family members and loved ones, we all know that communication is vital to the success and the health of a relationship. When we don't communicate with one another, we fail to communicate with one another, there, there, there comes a, a disconnect. A disconnect takes place. And um, when there's a disconnect, we know that that relationship is not going to be able to endure you know, for a long period of time. And so... Even in our carnal relationships, even in our earthly relationships, we all know that communication is key, is vital, it's necessary to the life of that relationship. Well, prayer is necessary to the life of our relationship with God, the life and the longevity of it, the success of it, the strength of it. And so the more we pray, the greater and better that our relationship with God becomes. It becomes stronger, it becomes steady. It becomes consistent. It becomes firm. So it's very important that we pray because prayer is more than just talking to God. Prayer is more than just mere communication. Prayer is our line of direct communication to God, but prayer is so much more than talking to God. And so I just want to reiterate today that prayer is relationship. In other words, when you go days and weeks without talking to God, you ought to feel some kind of way. You, you ought to feel sad by that. You should feel uncomfortable with that. You should feel unsettled with that because the more we go without praying, the more we become disconnected from God and the more that our relationship with God begins to crumble. And so it's very important. It's very necessary that you keep in mind that prayer is more than just talking to God. It's building relationship. It is fellowshipping with God it is how we relate to God. It is how we draw closer to God. It's how we worship God because prayer is an act of worship. And when we worship God, we must worship God in spirit and in truth. And so prayer is another way that we can worship God in spirit and in truth. Prayer is a way that we can fellowship with God each and every day. It's a way we can build our relationship with him. It's a way we can get closer to him. It's the way we can commune with him each and every day. And what I love about prayer is that it's such, it's such a powerful privilege. It's so powerful that we can pray to God anytime, any day, anywhere, whether it's silently, whether it's, it's out loud, you know, whether it's in our sacred and secret place in our home, we can pray to God at any time, any place, anywhere. That line of communication that we have with God is open 24-7 a day. So we can call on God anytime and he's going to answer. He says, call upon me and I will answer you. He said, I will even show you great and mighty things that you didn't even know. So we can call on God anytime in prayer. So I just want to reiterate to that today that Prayer is 
relationship. Prayer is fellowship. Prayer is an act of worship. It's how we worship God. It's how we fellowship with God. It's how we relate to God. But I'm here today because God gave me another aspect of the message to bring to you today. Um, I, I, the Lord was speaking to me and, and he was revealing to me that there's so many of us who are discouraged right now. And, and because we are discouraged, we are neglecting our prayer life. That is the time to pray. When you're being tested, when you're being tried, when you're being challenged on every side, when you're being perplexed, when you're in distress, when you're feeling oppressed, that is the time to pray the most. Listen, Satan does not want us to pray. He does not want us to pray because again, prayer is relationship. Prayer is fellowship. Prayer is, is, is worship. Prayer is our direct line of communication with God. And when we don't pray, we are actually disconnecting that line. It's our lifeline. It's our communication line. And so we need to stay connected to God through prayer. And so the enemy knows that when that mode of communication is broken, when it's interrupted, when it's distracted, then there goes our relationship with God. There goes our fellowship with God. There goes our worship with God. When AT&T or Verizon or whomever disconnect our line, then we can no longer communicate with the world. We can't communicate with our loved ones, our families. We can't call anybody. And so a lot of us are frantic. Because we feel like our relationships are being impaired because we cannot reach out and call the ones that we love. But guess what? When your line of communication with God is interrupted, oh my God, when it's disrupted, when it's, it's disconnected, then there goes our relationship with God. There goes our fellowship with God. There goes our worship with God. So it's very important that you stay connected to God in prayer. And so what I'm going to talk about today is persisting in prayer. It's a very brief message, but God gave me this message a few minutes ago. He gave it to me actually early this morning. And a few minutes ago, he gave me the urgency to come before you and to talk to you about persisting in prayer prayer. No matter what's going on in your life, you got to keep on pressing. You got to keep on persevering and you got to keep on pushing and prevailing in prayer. And if you do that, trust me, something amazing is going to happen for you. And so I just want to encourage you because there are many of us who are not persisting in prayer. The least little thing that happens in our lives, the least little distraction, the least little interruption, the least little challenge or struggle, we begin to fall back and hold back in our prayer life. But God says this is the time. This is the season. And this is the day and hour that you need to persist in prayer. And if you persist in prayer. You are going to prevail in prayer. And so I'm here to encourage you today to keep on praying. Oh my God. Keep on pressing. Keep on pushing. And keep on prevailing in prayer. Because it's a great privilege. And it is a great power that we have from God. And so the Bible says in Luke 18 and 1 that men are to always to pray and not lose heart, heart and not give up. Listen, if you don't pray consistently, you are going to lose courage. You are going to feel discouraged. You are going to give up. You're going to give out. You're going to give in. You're going to quit. You're going to compromise your relationship with God, your fellowship with God, your worship in God. You are going to be discouraged and you're going to give up. You're going to give in. You're going to give out. And so if you're feeling that way right now, maybe you should monitor. Maybe you should observe. Maybe you should analyze your prayer life and see, am I consistently praying to God? Because praying without ceasing, praying always to men are to always to pray at all times. That means that just pray, just be consistent in your prayer life. Make time every day to pray to God. Take time every day to pray to God. Jesus, the most powerful spirit, the most powerful person to ever walk this earth. He took time to pray to the father. He will find a secluded, quiet place and he will pray to the father. The enemy does not want us to pray. He took prayer out of school and look what happened. But I used to tell my daughter, he can't take prayer out of your heart. I still want you to pray when you're at school. I still want you to pray when you're eating your lunch. I still want you to pray when you're in that classroom because he can't stop us. Satan cannot stop us from praying. When the law of man 
begins to try to supersede the law of God, then we must obey God and not man. Even in a school building, you can still pray. Even in the courthouse, you can still pray. You may not be able to rally around a lot of people, but you can still, with your mouth closed and your heart open to God, begin to pray. And so the Bible says, Paul says, well, Jesus says, I'm sorry. Now, Jesus was telling his disciples in this, in this scripture that as a parable that men ought to always to pray and not give up and not lose heart. And if you do not pray consistently, you are going to feel discouraged. You are going to give up. You are going to give out. You are going to quit. Your heart is going to become hardened and you are going to, you are going to compromise your relationship, your fellowship and your worship with God. And so please continue to persist in prayer. It says in Colossians 4 and 2, be persistent and devoted to prayer, being alert and focused in your prayer life with an attitude of thanksgiving. Be persistent and devoted to prayer. This is my message today for to encourage you to be persistent, to be devoted to prayer. That is the word that God gave me to share with you today, especially those of you who are feeling discouraged, those of you who are troubled and weary in your soul and feel like you don't have the strength nor the energy to pray. But even if you can't open up your mouth, do like Hannah did. Hannah was so burdened. She was overwhelmed. She was depressed. She was oppressed. She was troubled in her soul. But at her breaking point, she fell on her knees and she began to pray to the Father. And the Bible says that her mouth was moving but words were not coming out of her mouth but she was pouring out her heart to God she was fervently she was earnestly and she was purposely and intentionally and she was consistently pouring out her heart to God God heard her cry and God answered her prayer God hears the prayers of the righteous don't let Satan deceive you to think that your prayers are not working don't let Satan deceive you to think that your prayers are not reaching God because they are reaching God and says be devoted and be consistent in your prayer life be alert i love that prayer keeps us alert it keeps us focused it keeps us in tune and discerning what the enemy is up to and what's going on in the atmosphere what's going on in your home what's going on on your job it keeps us alert and focused it says be alert and focused in your prayer life with an attitude of thanksgiving and so when you begin to pray to god hallelujah begin to thank him the same father i thank you that you have heard my prayer god i thank you that you're going to give me the answer that i need you're going to bring that healing that I desire. You're going to meet that need that I have laid before you, oh God. So as you pray, take it to another level and begin to thank God in advance for not only hearing your prayers, but delivering what you need through your prayer. Because remember, prayer is how we believe and we receive from the Lord. Hallelujah. The third scripture that I would love to share with you is 1 Thessalonians 5. 16 through 18. It says, rejoice always and delight in your faith. Be unceasing and persistent. There's that word again. That's my message, persistent prayer. Be, unce be unceasing and persistent in prayer. Listen to this. In every situation, no matter what the circumstances, be thankful and continually give thanks to God for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Listen, we all are facing something. We all are going through something. God knew before the foundations of the world that we would have circumstances and we would have struggles and we would have challenges. But yet he says to us, be unceasing and persistent in prayer, regardless of the circumstance. In other words, your circumstances shouldn't supersede your ability and your desire to pray before the father. God knows we can pray despite our circumstances. That's why he encouraged us in this passage to pray, be unceasing in prayer, and to persist in prayer regardless of your challenge, regardless of your circumstance, regardless of your situation. Don't get wrapped up in your emotions. Don't get wrapped up in your own mind, but be in the spirit and begin to pray in the spirit. That means in obedience to God, because it says that this is the will of God concerning us in Christ Jesus. It is the will of God for us to pray. It is it's a commandment of God for us to pray. It is a requirement from God for us to pray because prayer is for our benefit. It is the greatest privilege, one of the greatest privileges that we have as believers. It is a great joy. It is a great pleasure. It is a great power. It is a great privilege that God has given to the believer. 
So no matter your circumstances, I know some of us are overwhelmed. We have dire circumstances. We have great challenges. We have great struggles. The struggles are real, but so is God. Hallelujah. We should be dedicated and devoted to our prayer life. We should be consistent and we should be persistent in prayer. And we are to pray without ceasing. This is what God has instructed us to do, especially during those times when you're facing challenges, when you're facing struggles, when you're facing circumstances that are bigger than you. Hallelujah. Pray and give those circumstances, give those challenges to God in prayer. He says, cast all your cares upon me because I care for you. Cast your burdens upon the Lord and he will sustain you. How do I cast those burdens upon God? How do I cast my cares upon God? I do that through prayer. And that's why Satan doesn't want you to pray, to pray because he knows not only that prayer is a privilege, but it is a great power in the mouth and the heart and the hands of every believer. Persist in prayer, Daniel had circumstances. Daniel's life, Daniel's life was on the line. And I love what he says in um, Daniel 6 and 10. It says, now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, when he knew that the king had signed the decree, that for 30 days, nobody could pray to a man or to God other than the king. And if they did, they would get thrown in the lion's den. Daniel knew about this decree. He heard about the decree. It says when, Dan when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home and in his upper room with his windows open towards Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks to God, gave thanks before God as he was accustomed since his early days. Daniel says, I'm not going to let my circumstances break my life. I'm not going to let my circumstances break my mode of communication, my lines of communication and fellowship and worship to God. I'm not going to allow my circumstances to disrupt my prayer life. I'm going to keep on praying to my God who I know hears and answers and acts upon my prayers. I love what Daniel said. I love what Daniel did. Daniel continued on. He prayed without ceasing. He was persistent in prayer and he was devoted to his prayer life. The Bible says men are to always to pray and not faint, not give in, not quit, not lose heart. If Daniel didn't have a prayer life, the moment he heard that decree, he would have crumbled. He would have fallen down. Instead of on his knees to pray to God, he would have fallen down in depression. He would have fallen down in discouragement. But no, Daniel said, I'm going to keep on praying because that's what I do. Prayer is what I do. I'm going to do as I always do regardless of my circumstances. I'm going to pray because I know God hears and I know God delivers and I know God sets free. And so I am going to continue to pray to God. I'm not going to allow my circumstances to break my mode of prayer. I'm not going to let my circumstances break my spirit. I'm going to continue to pray on to the Lord. And that's what Daniel did. And as we all know, God delivered Daniel. <laughs> not a hair on his head was harmed. God delivered him and Daniel was still singing praises to God. And what I love about it, it says when Daniel prayed, he did so with thanksgiving. I'm telling you for some of us, that's what's missing in our prayer life. The thanksgiving the thanksgiving portion we are to always to pray and give thanks in the same manner okay i love when it says in philippians that be anxious for nothing but in all things through prayer and supplication with the spirit of thanksgiving let your request be known unto god and the peace of god that surpass all understanding will guard your heart and mind in christ jesus listen he says when you pray thank me Thank me for hearing your prayers. Thank me for answering your prayers. Thank me for acting and moving on your behalf through your prayers. Remember, prayer is how we believe and how we receive from the Lord. So when you pray, be sure to thank God. God, I thank you Woo, that the need has already been met. I thank you that my body is already healed. I thank you, Lord God, that this prayer has already been answered. So I've prayed to you and I know you heard me. And so I'm going to thank you. And I pray and I pray God in confidence because I know that when I pray according to your will that you hear me every time. And my prayer is in alignment and agreement with your will. And he says, when you pray in that manner, you can be assured and confident that God heard your prayer and that God will surely answer that prayer prayer. And my final scripture, I love this, is that when Jesus was in Gethsemane, I believe this is the greatest example of persisting in prayer. I love this. Jesus is truly our perfect example. He is the example that we are to follow. Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane. He was getting ready to be crucified. And so at this time, the Bible says that Jesus was in great distress. He was in great distress in this moment. 
And it says here in Matthew 26, verse 26, starting there. I'm sorry, verse Matthew 26, verse 36. It says, then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, Olive Press. And he told his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. Look at this. We're talking about the King of Kings. We're talking about the Lord of Lords who had a dire situation and circumstance before him. But yet and still, he began to pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, James and John, he began to be grieved and greatly distressed. My God, many of us have felt this way when we've been grieved and greatly distressed and just felt like we didn't have the energy, the emotion, the mind to pray because prayer requires the whole person. It requires the whole person. When we pray, we must take in our mind. We must take in our body, our souls, our everything. Prayer requires the whole person. And so he began to be grieved and greatly distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is deeply grieved so that I am almost dying of sorrow. Stay here and stay awake and keep watch with me. And after going a little farther, he fell face down and prayed saying, my father, if it is possible, that is consistent with your will, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will but that's your will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and Peter and said to Peter, so you men could not stay awake and keep watch with me for one hour. Keep actively watching. This is what Jesus is saying to them. Keep actively watching and praying. This is what God is saying to you today. Keep actively watching and praying that you may not come into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Your flesh does not want to pray at times. But your spirit man always wants to pray. And that is what drives us to pray. Our spirit saying, pray to the Father. I need you to pray to the Father. That's the Holy Spirit urging us and auctioning us and driving us and, and working through us and praying through us so that we can go to the Father in the prayer. No matter what your flesh says, many times your flesh is not going to want to read the word. It's not going to want to pray, but still persist in prayer. Jesus had a situation here. And then his disciples, three of them that he took with him, couldn't even stay up and pray with Jesus. There will be times where you may feel like people are asleep. There may be times you may feel like they're not praying with you or for you, but know this. Sometimes that thing is between you and God. Sometimes it's going to only be so far that God lets people go with you. And then you got to get to that place is that if nobody else prays with me, if nobody else rally around me in prayer, I'm going to continue to persist. I'm going to continue to press. I'm going to continue to push. And I'm going to continue to prevail in prayer because I have the privilege and the power to pray to the Father. Thank you, God. That's what Jesus did. And so it says he went away a second time and prayed saying, my father, if this cannot pass away unless I drink it, your will be done. There will be some cups that you're going to have to drink. But you're going to still have to press and persist and push and prevail in prayer through it all. Thank you, Father. Again, he came and found them sleeping. This is Jesus. For their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time. Saying the same words and once more. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and, and, and resisting? Are you still sleeping and resting? Listen, the hour of my sacrifice is at hand and the son of man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is near. Jesus prays, he's, he pressed, he pushed, he persists and he prevailed in prayer. And because he prevailed, thank you father, in prayer, he went up to that cross to sacrifice his life for you and for me and for all of us who will come, for all of us who will receive him, all of us who will believe in him. He sacrificed and gave his life as a ransom for all men. And he pressed, he prayed, he pressed in prayer, he pushed, he persists, and he prevailed. I'm here to encourage you today to persist in prayer, no matter your circumstances, no matter the situation, no matter the obstacles that are before you, hallelujah. God tells us in his word to pray without ceasing. And while we're praying to give him the thanks for what he's going to do on behalf of our prayers, he says for us to pray without ceasing so that we won't be discouraged, so that we won't quit, so that we won't yield to temptation and lust and the cares of this world. 
but that we will be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work, work of the Lord. God wants us to prevail in prayer. And in order for us to prevail, we got to persist. If you persist in prayer, you will prevail. That's the word that the Lord gave me to share with you today. To encourage each and every one of you who are listening to this message to persist in prayer. The flesh may be weak, but your spirit is willing. Follow your spirit. Follow the, lead, follow the leading and guidance of the Holy Spirit. No matter what your circumstance is. No matter how you're feeling today. No matter what you're going through. Pray to the Father because he's waiting to hear from you. He's waiting to answer you. He's waiting to move on your behalf. Prayer shows not only your faith in God and your trust in God, but your dependency upon the Father. And so persist in prayer and you will prevail. Father, we thank you right now, God. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the power of prayer. We thank you for the privilege, for it is a great, wonderful, and sweet privilege that you've given to your people. We thank you right now for the privilege of prayer. We thank you that we can call upon you anytime, any place, and anywhere, God. And you will answer us. You will hear us. And you will move on our behalf. Father, we thank you that as we draw nigh to you in prayer, as we draw closer to you, God, you will draw closer to us in prayer. We thank you, O oh God, that we call upon you in prayer, that you will, you will hear us and show us great things and mighty things that we didn't even know. You would give us answers. You would give us solutions. You would give us ideas. You would give us vision. You would heal us. You would deliver us. You would set us free, O oh God, by means of our prayers. And so, Father, we thank you that as we pray, we are building our relationship with you, God. We are positioning ourselves to have greater fellowship, greater relationship, and greater worship, oh God, in you. And so, Father, we just thank you. We ask that you increase us, oh God, in our prayer life. Help us to be alert. Help us to be persistent. Help us to pray without ceasing. Help us to push, to press, and to prevail in prayer. For, oh God, it is a great privilege, and it is our direct line of communication to you. It is our means of relationship, our means of fellowship, and our means of worship. Father, we thank you now that even in this hour, even right now that you hear the prayers, I'm praying for your people. I pray that they will be encouraged, O oh God, that you will lift their countenance, Lord Jesus, and that you will give them strength, you will give them guidance and wisdom, O oh God. Give them everything that they need to continue, O oh God, to press, to push, and to prevail and persist in prayer. We thank you right now, oh God, in advance for hearing us. We thank you for answering us, oh God. We thank you that the things that we have lifted up before you, God, that it will be manifested in our lives. We give you the honor, the glory, and the praise that you desire and you deserve. In your son Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Remember to persist in prayer. Blessings to you. Yes, it's too.